Hello. It's the 13th day of March, and welcome to the Thoughts for the Day. The scripture for today comes from Psalm 32 and verse 2. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. To complete reading the Bible in a year today, you need to read Deuteronomy chapters 19, 20, and 21, and Mark chapter 13, verses 21 to 37. Thoughts for the day. Nothing great will ever be achieved without great men, and men are great only when they are determined to be so. Within each of us is a hidden store of determination. Determination is what will keep us in the race when all seems lost. I know one of the greatest principles of success. If I persist long enough, I will succeed. The motivational thought for today, how can you expect God to speak in a gentle and inward voice which melts the soul? When you are making so much noise with your own ideas, be silent and God will speak again. On this day, in 1781, the planet Uranus is discovered. It is the third largest planet by radius in the solar system. In 1877, on this day, American Chester Greenwood patented earmuffs which he had invented when he was 15 years of age. In 1979, the European Monetary System was established. The ECU was created. In 2008, gold prices on the New York Mercantile Exchange hit $1,000 US an ounce for the first time. And they're almost double that now. And in 2020, US President Donald Trump declared a national emergency, freeing up $50 billion to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Personal story of the day, the love of God. Many marriages and de facto relationships are failing because of one common mistake. People falsely believe that they fall out of love. Therefore, they move on regardless of the other partner. This is also one of the greatest mistakes made by those who wish to follow God. They fall out of love with their Bible or the church or perhaps with God himself. Love is much more than pleasant or devoted feeling about a person or matters of interest. Wedding vows are promises of action, not promises of feelings which are fleeting and subject to swift changes. Firstly, Wedding vows are promises to be united to a single person for life. They include promises of support, of loyalty and continuance, despite poverty, sickness and good and bad times. They are about doing things together, facing positive and negative forces and actions for the entire lives of the two people. They are not about feeling good till things change. In fact, the very reason wedding vows are given is because time and pressure change feelings. Thus, guidelines are needed to keep couples in a situation where their union can survive. Because the feelings we have on any given day are subject to change and fluctuation, true love has never been about emotion or feelings. It is about actions that work, that guard the sanctity of the relationship. The most often overlooked reality about marriage vows is that they are given before and to God as well as to each other. Thus, they're a pledge for life. This is what God has given us when we receive the Holy Spirit. God never falls out of love with us, but always maintains his service and support, the actions of true love. Our service to God is via the church and its people, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness, and in health. A great example in the Bible of someone who loved God yet hated the people he had to serve was Jonah. Jonah hated the Assyrians because of their evil deeds against the people of God. 
he firstly rejected God and headed in the opposite direction to where God had sent him until he was willingly redirected by God himself. Swallowed by a great fish, he was taken in the right direction and spit up on the land where he was directed to go. 120,000 people in Nineveh repented from their evil deeds and their lives were spared because Jonah obeyed, loved God. Not because Jonah loved them by feelings, but because Jonah served them despite his emotions and feelings. The devotional thoughts of the day. The first is entitled Contentment with Godliness is Greater Gain. The opening verses of Numbers 25 describe a scene of immorality, idolatry, and judgment. When the entire story is known, the scene is even sadder than it appears. Earlier, Balak had sought to hire Balaam to curse Israel. When initially rebuffed, Balak upped the ante and made the offer too good to refuse. He tried, but Balaam could not curse those whom God had determined to bless. But Balaam still wanted the gold. If he could not get it by cursing, he would try to get it by counselling. He counselled Balak to entice Israel to immorality and idolatry. You can read about that in Numbers 31 and verse 16. Then they would bring God's judgment on themselves. By so doing, Balaam accomplished the task for which he was hired. Balaam's epitaph in the New Testament is that he, quote, loved the wages of wickedness, unquote. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 15. He went for the gold and is remembered for it. In Jude, verse 11, there is another New Testament reference to Balaam. Jude writes of those who quote, have rushed for profit into Balaam's era, unquote. The era of Balaam continues today. A person may not be hired to curse another, but the willingness to put personal gain over others remains. The world places its emphasis on getting. A Christian's worldview should emphasize giving. Do not follow the way of Balaam. How important are material things to you? Don't let possessions distort your values. Some things are not worth the cost. That was a lesson that Balaam did not learn. The second thought is entitled Dry Creek? Question mark. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. That's the scripture which is taken from 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 6 to 7. And of course, he's talking about the time that Elijah was in the, uh, in the desert. John Brenz, a friend of Martin Luther, was hated by the Emperor Charles V. He often tried to kill Brenz and on one occasion sent a troop of cavalrymen to arrest him. Hearing about the plot, Brenz took a loaf of bread and went to a nearby town where he hid in a hayloft. He was there for 14 days. Obviously, one loaf of bread was not enough for two weeks. But each day, a hen came into the loft and laid an egg without cackling. On the 15th day, the hen did not show up. It seemed like the one lifeline he had clung to had been severed. As he was wondering what he would do without food, Brenz heard the people in the street below saying, the cavalrymen have gone at last. Elijah also experienced what appeared to be a loss of an essential lifeline. God had sent him into the wilderness and provided food through the ministry of ravens and water from a small creek. But then a difficult situation became worse. As the drought continued, the brook dried up. At first glance, it might seem that God no longer cared about what happened to his prophet. Instead, God chose to provide in a different way and graciously directed him to the home of a widow in the city of Zarephath, in verse 9. Perhaps you feel that your creek also has dried up. The friend who has been your source of refreshment in a spiritual desert has moved away. The person who has been your lifeline at work has taken a new job. Whatever the case, trust God to provide through another source. 
It may be far different from what met your need before, but remember, God will not fail you. When God closes a door, he always opens a window. You are never left alone and helpless. The jokes of the day. A few points to ponder. Tell a man that there are 400 billion stars and he'll believe you. Tell him a bench has wet paint and he has to touch it. How come Superman could stop bullets with his chest, but he always ducked when someone threw a gun at him? Why does sour cream have an expiration date? Why do we wait until a pig is dead to cure it? Why doesn't glue stick to the inside of the bottle? If a mute swears, does his mother wash his hands with soap? Isn't it a bit unnerving that doctors call what they do practice? Why do they lock service station bathrooms? Is it because they're afraid someone will clean them? <laughs> Why doesn't Tarzan have a beard? Atheism is a non-profit organisation. have to think about that one a bit. Never trust a stockbroker who's married to a travel agent. I went to a bookshop and asked the saleswoman, where's the self-help section? She said if she told me, it would defeat the purpose. <laughs> the man was brought to Mercy Hospital and taken in for a coronary surgery. The operation went well, and as he regained his consciousness, he was reassured by a sister of Mercy who was waiting by his bed. Mr. Smith, you're going to be just fine, said the nun, gently patting his hand. We do need to know, however, how you're going to pay for your stay here. Are you covered by insurance? No, I'm not, the man whispered hoarsely. Can you pay in cash, persisted the nun. I'm afraid I can't, sister. Well, do you have any close relatives, the nun asked. Just my sister in New Mexico, he volunteered, but she's a humble spinster nun. Oh, I must correct you, Mr. Smith. Nuns are not spinsters. They are married to God. Oh, wonderful, said Mr. Smith. In that case, please send the bill to my, to my brother-in-law. <laughs> Facts of the day. As of July 2021, the Australian population was 25.7 million people. The themes from the movies Unforgiven, A Perfect World, The Bridges of Madison County and Absolute Power were all written by Clint Eastwood. The closing thought for today, Lord, slow me down. Give me time to enjoy my walk, time to spend with my family and friends, time to meditate on our relationship, time to fellowship, time to save lives. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you have a blessed Sunday and we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning. Bye for now.